verse and uh, give you a couple of thoughts. One of my favorite passages, Luke chapter 11 and verse 1. And it came to pass as he was, uh, as he was praying in a certain place, when, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. He said unto him, them, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. The Lord uh, responds to the disciples uh, asking him to teach them to pray. And he starts out, I'll never forget this, I read this many years ago and learned this, this message many years ago. He says, Our Father... And Arthur W. Pink made the statement, he says, when you address God, realize you're addressing Jesus is teaching us here. We are addressing a divine person, our Father. And we need to realize that he is the God of heaven. He is the God of the universe. And he is my Father. And uh, I don't know about you tonight, but that encourages me that God is my Father. Paul said, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And uh, we can go to the Lord in a time of prayer just as a child would go to their own father and asking, asking for uh, help and, uh, and assistance. And we don't think about that much, but uh, we have a God who is ready to listen. He's a God that not only wants to listen to my prayers and meet and answer my prayer, but God wants to, uh, if you will, a fellowship with me in my time of prayer. He's my father. Do you ever remember? I, I can remember days that I'd like to, when I was a child, I wanted to be with my dad. I wanted my dad to take me fishing or, or hunting. We'd duck hunt or whatever we were doing. And I just wanted to spend time with my father. Jesus says this. He said, when you pray, say our father. And there is a, there is a, there's a, there's a, thought being embedded in our hearts there we need to think about it as God as our father now look we don't do that many times do we we pray and we realize we're addressing God but tonight I want to I want I don't want you to leave without getting hold of this he's your father now what father will not do for his children he is our father praise the Lord and and God uh, sometimes we'll go to him in a time of reverence and respect, and we should. But Jesus here is making the statement that we need to learn to address God as our Father who has a divine position. It's not just that he's my Father, but my Father holds a divine position, and he is able to do something about what I'm talking about. Let me ask you this. Have you ever had God do something for you? I mean, serious. You had the Lord to do something for you. God did it. Uh, man, nothing will build your faith and my faith like that to allow to see that when God does something. Now, the, 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 the major thought behind it is this. It's one thing for you and I to ask someone to help us. Uh, maybe a friend or maybe the church and, and someone meet that need. How many of you ever had that? I've had people had to meet my need before and they meet that need. But it's a total different ball game when a father meets the needs of his children. He not only will meet that need and most of the time, if not all the time, do more than they needed, but he strongly desires to want to be the one to make it happen. And I want to remind you tonight, Jesus said when you pray, say our Father. He wants to meet your need and my need. He wants to do something for you and I. He ever liveth to make intercession, the Bible says. And the Father, listen, the Father seeketh such to worship him. Tonight, God wants to do something for you, friend. Me. That, that's amazing to me. Jesus said, when you pray, say our Father. You're addressing, realize you're addressing a divine person. Now watch it. He didn't stop there. He said, our Father who art in heaven. 
Now, he's not only a divine person, but he's in a divine place. Our Father who art in heaven. Have you thought about it? You ever, you ever remember going to your, your, your dad's for Christmas or for Thanksgiving? You'd get there and the food would be there. It'd all be spread and everybody would be there. And uh, I miss old, I, I enjoy it. Now that, that's, that's falling on my wife and I. And she just, she kindly every now and then reminds me, says, you take, you love it and you're excited about it, but you don't have to do half the work in the house and all that. And, uh, but there's a lot of preparation for it, right? If, if you're going to go by and be with family. But have you thought about this? Have you, have you thought about this much? How many of you, how many, I want you to think about the best Christmas or the best Thanksgiving just for a moment. Just, I want to just take and go back in your mind as a child or as an adult, whatever it was, and try to think about the best Christmas you had. Everybody doing it? Everybody doing that? All right, just for a moment. What stood out more than anything? Just quickly, somebody spit it out to me. What was it? Okay, she bought Mark clothes, sold a gift. Somebody else give me something. What stood out about that? All the family. All the family. Amen. Someone else give me something. Real quickly, what? What were you thinking about? What was special to you about that time? Anybody real quickly? Come on, help me, help me, help me, help me. The quicker you talk, the quicker I preach. Huh? With all your family, your mom and dad, somebody else. I'm going to get all of y'all. I want to hear something from all of you. Give me something, Marty. What do you think about when you think about one of the greatest Christmases you ever had? The love we have. Amen. How about you, Morgan? Give me something. Amen, brother. <laughs> Food. Don't forget the food in the family. Don what about you? Family, of course. You get there and you see your family. You see everything that's going on. And everybody, you know, normally no one's in a bad mood. We're all excited. Now, have you thought about this? Nothing compares to where God sits right now. Our Father who art in heaven. I'm telling you, God, we've got a Father that's sitting in heaven, and his throne is sitting on the streets of gold and gates of pearl. That is not a fairy tale, friend. That's not just a, a thought to give you and I to make us feel good, to make us have the tingling sensation of a York peppermint patty or make us feel good. It is a fact, and Jesus is saying, when you pray, say, Our Father, there are father is a divine person god is a divine person he is alive he is in heaven he's in a divine place our father who art in heaven he holds a divine position what do you mean he's on the throne of this universe my father your father the one that saved us and loved us and the one that answers our prayer holds a divine position he is on the throne of the universe have you ever thought about that one thing to go in and see your family and mine and we're encouraged but did you know something one day i'm gonna go there <laughs> i'm gonna go there amen brother scott cottle wrote that song i'm gonna go there i'm going there i'm going home there's a there's a time <laughs> And we're going to go there and we're going to see him for who he is face to face. All these times. How many prayers have you ever prayed? You ever thought about that? How many prayers have, has God ever really listened to you and I? And there's coming a time that we're going to be beckoned to his presence in his house. I can remember. Uh, we ought to pray about this. Maybe I can. I can one day get my wife she can sing this song by the way but Becky Calvert Dr. Bud Calvert's daughter she wrote a song when she was in the hospital she was paralyzed uh, had a car wreck didn't think she'd ever walk again but she was paralyzed from the neck down and they didn't ever know they didn't ever think she may walk again but from that experience she wrote a song entitled In My Father's House and you talk about God being all over you. It is a beautiful song. And she, she highlights the things of the Father, that God is a Father to his children. Jesus said, when you pray, 
say our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. A divine person who holds a divine position. Here's the key to it, and I'm finished. Jesus said, when you pray, learn to have a divine petition. What do you mean, preacher? You know, it's good that we pray for the things that you and I need. But have you ever thought about it this way? How would our prayer life be answered when we started getting close enough to the Lord that we begin to pray for things that He wants? Not that He needs, but that He wants. God desires things to happen in my life and yours. The disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I'm so grateful he's my Father. You know, I have an earthly father. There's a scripture that talks about God being a father to the fatherless. And that scripture literally means this, that God, when he saves a person, he becomes a divine father with divine instructions in everything he does for you and I and all how he instructs us is for our own good and our own benefit. Now, let me, I'm going to close with this thought. Uh, we only have, we got a couple fathers here. But one of the saddest things about being a father is sometimes dads, they respond too quick or they react too quick. And my children, I was tough. My wife will tell you I was tough on them. And there's times that I've done things and my intention was right. I was trying to teach them right. But even I, I either done too much or maybe not enough discipline. And uh, I made a mistake in the life of my children. I have made mistakes. Do you realize that God has never made a mistake in your life or my life? God will never have to sit us down and say, hey, listen, I was too, I was too hard on you. I, was, you know, I expected too much from you. No, no, no. Why? He's a perfect father. You've got a perfect father who is in heaven, living in a perfect place, and he wants his perfect, sovereign, divine will for you and I. I love him tonight. I love him. All right, unless, unless we got anybody has a word before we close. I told you, I promised you, I was going to let you go home, and I'm going to do it. Anybody real quick, maybe maybe just real quickly, you'd like to say something. The Lord's done something for you. He's been a father to you. He's done something for you. And it might just take a second or two for you to say, hey, I remember when God did this and the Lord done this. And I want to give you that opportunity. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. He, he, he can control that, can he? I'm sure it did. I'm sure it did. It didn't surprise God, though. Anyone else real quickly? Come on now. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Anybody else? The Lord, maybe real quickly before we leave. Heavenly Father, thank you so much again for your kindness to us. Lord, I pray for these that are away from us. I thank you again for the faithfulness of your people, Lord. Uh, please bless your people, Lord. I know you will. We thank you that you're a God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And Lord, uh, you never sleep nor slumber, but you're always watching over your children. Thank you for being a divine heavenly father. Be with us throughout this week. Keep us safe. Get us all home safely tonight. And Lord, help us uh, to uh, maybe all of us get some rest, enjoy our time off from work.
save those in our family that's lost. Lord, if we, those that are in our family that need to be turned to you, I pray, God, that you would break their hearts and, and pull them to repentance. Bless our people. Thank you again for your goodness in Christ's name. Amen. All right, y'all better mark it down. Enjoy it.